Right, everyone, we have here a little uh, project. Uh, it's a Nuffield 465 tractor. This is mine. I bought this about three or four years ago. So, right at the moment, what I'm doing, I'll just take this sheet off. I am going to be pulling these liners out. Um, I have got all the pistons out of it. I'll show you them when we get back over the shed, as well as why it's having these problems or why I suspect it's having these problems. But yeah, I'm doing a full tear down. Um, I'm gonna be putting new liners, new new rings in the pistons, because the pistons aren't too bad actually. Um, and the liners aren't too bad, so it pains me to do them, but because it sat for six years in a paddock, I'd rather fix them now as preventative maintenance than have it happen along the track where they go porous or they crack, and then I have to pull the whole thing apart again. But yeah, so I will be doing that as well as possibly a whole head rebuild. Um, we'll get onto that later when I go up to the shed. But uh, while I'm here, I've had to take on, I've had to take off a lot of stuff to get the head off. So to take off the fuel filters, all the thermostat housing, all that sort of stuff, top radiator hose, I drain the radiator out fully. All the injector lines, injectors, um, what else did I have to do? Oh, battery box, I had to take that out, as well as a fuse box and all the switches that were on it. Um, as well as all the panels around the around it, obviously, so the bonnet side panels, fuel tanks over there. Oh, here's a spare motor I bought in case it was severely fucked. I'll thank you not to use that kind of language. Um, I've been told this run when I bought it, but I've not seen it with my own eyes, so I'm not believing anything just yet. But it does have good compression from what I can feel. Um, and there's not, well, there's minimal crank play, so it hasn't dropped its thrust washers. There, I was looking at another engine at the same yard a uh, newer version of this, which is a 498, because this is a 38 TD. That's also a 38 TD, but these are two different motors. They both have um, different blocks. The dip bl bl blocks are bored out to different uh, sizes, and the head's are different on this one because it has Welsh plugs instead of uh, um, threaded hex plugs like the, that motor. But, uh, yeah, the motor I was looking at at the same yard had a lot of play in the crank. So whether it's just really worn out and it needs um, it needs new bearings on the crank, uh, but it's more likely, much more likely, that the thrust washers have dropped out. And the bloke said he drove it off to the back of a truck. So if he's drove it off the back of, a, of the truck and it's had that much crank play in it, um, yeah, it's, it's a scrap block. It's probably the crank's probably eaten into the block, so it means that it would have to be bored out and it would be a whole lot of money to get it fixed and it's not really worth it. Now, I believe this one has had a, a rebuilt injection pump because you don't always find little numbers on the injection pump housings. Um, not on these injector pumps anyway. But yeah, so this is a different injector pump to the engine on that anyway. Um, now, this one has a... P4801, so it's the same injector pump, but this one has been tuned differently to the other one. So it's a Dash 5. And this one, I believe, by memory, should be a Dash 2. Yes, that's a Dash 2. So this one here is set for 65 horsepower. The one on that engine is set for 70 horsepower. So if I was to change pumps, which this one's already rebuilt anyway, as well as the injectors, um, if I was to change pumps, which I we'll probably won't be doing, this pump will be giving out more power. Um, but yeah. So for what I paid for it, it's a pretty good engine. Uh, it has got a new starter motor as well. Um, as well as power steering. It's another thing I can make a bit of coin off of. Um, this motor, as I said, does have a, a different block as well. Now, it's not totally different. The only difference is that this one is bored out slightly more than the block in that tractor. So, yeah. Um, anyway, back to this one. I haven't done a whole lot to it overall. I mean, it's got a new water pump. I fitted that a couple of days ago. Um, 
so that's on there now so that should be good for when i put it back together and i fitted a new lift pump as well that's that's working pretty good it used to have a misfire um in one of the cylinders and i fitted this and it sort of fixed the problem a bit more but it was still there and i'm guessing that the misfire was attributed or linked to the problems with the head so yeah Right, we'll go back over the shed and I'll show you what I'm uh, dealing with with the head. Alrighty, uh, this is the head for that uh, same motor. And uh, yeah, so I took it off and I put a straight edge on the, the, the face of it because these engines you recommended to put a, a um, straight edge on them to check the, the flat, how flat they are. I did that and unfortunately when I put the torch behind it I could see light so there was uh, a warp warp in it somewhere it's around the middle here and it's about three thou out so yeah I had the wire wheel on it yesterday that one and uh, cleaned it up because originally I thought it was seven thou but there was lots of carbon build up on it so after a wire wheel um, I have found out that it's actually three thou but yeah no, it's, it's not looking the finest for this head because I got told by an engine builder, or the bloke I'm going to go and see about getting it skimmed. He said about probably doing the seats for the valves and maybe facing the valves because he doesn't want, he thinks, he really reckons that there might be piston to valve contact or possibly even uh, lack of... Um, lack of ability to turn the motor over so it's got way too much compression that's what he thinks pretty bit of grass there um but yeah i, I don't know i'm i'm thinking of doing the full well not the full but the, the basic rebuild like getting the seats cut and the the uh the valves faced but uh, i'm not not entirely sure just yet but i'll flip it over and i'll show you with the straight edge what i'm dealing with here righty we're all set up here um i think i've found the warpage most of it's on the angle so it's on that angle and then that angle um i'll get my torch okay. Go on here. as you can see we're getting light through so that's not good it means it's warped however good thing is it's not good but it's not it's not great it's not terrible Let's see if i can find the uh correct one or oh, that just goes under and let's go up here it's sort of not wanting to go up there as it gets up here it just doesn't want to go at all so about 1.5 thou i might upgrade to uh, two thou just to check yeah we're getting we're hitting there. Yeah, that's pretty short. So it's about one and a half to two thou. Because I think I put the ruler on a bit of a, a bit of a, a thing, or what do you call it, a, a carbon deposit there. So it's probably not giving me a proper reading, but it's better than nothing. It's definitely warped. I shouldn't be able to see torch light through that straight edge. Um, but yeah. Anyhow, I will get back to you on that. I will probably be getting it skinned, as I said. Um, I don't want to just... I know my, my dad said just put it back on and bolt it back up and send it. <laughs> but I would rather do it properly and not have to pull the bastard apart again because couple of weeks later i've got another blown bloody head gasket well sorry i shouldn't say a blown head gasket the old one uh, wasn't blown actually i'll show you that now if i can find it where the hell did i put it so i've got the head gasket here yeah it's got a couple of marks around number two's firing which is a bit of a telltale sign that something's been going on in number two now, funnily enough, after inspecting the liners with my torch there, um, I did find a line going down one of the liners. It's only about that big. But it was going down the liners, which is a bit unusual. Um, so that's why I think it might be a score line. But it's very deep. Like, 
my fingernail gets caught in it. And usually score marks, like your fingernail will get caught in it, but it'll come off. Like this one would just, my fingernail would just dig in. So it's obviously a really deep score. But anyway, um, I, sh I figured I probably should tell you what actually went wrong with it um, and why I pulled it apart. So when I first got this tractor for three or four years ago, uh, it had been sitting for six years. I actually think it's been sitting for longer because the exhaust manifold was fully rotted. Um, but I got it home, I got it going, and it started leaking out the top right corner of the radiator. And at that point in time, I didn't actually know it was the engine was forcing cooling out. It wasn't until I got the radiator recalled and back to me when I first started the tractor up, it pushed coolant out of the, uh, the pressure cap and dribbled out of the overflow. Now, at that point, it was a dribble, all right? Now, somewhere along the times when I was using it, it got really bad uh, because before I pulled it apart, it was forcing, like, literally spraying water out of that, that uh, overflow tube. And uh, you're probably thinking, oh, it's bloody overheating. And it wasn't overheating. It, You would have this engine cold, and as soon as you started up cold, it would start forcing cooling out. Um, so, yeah, there was definitely something really, really horribly wrong with it. So, back to the overheating. I reckon it might have been overheated, because that's the only way you can get a warped head. Um, but the gasket isn't blown. You'd think the gasket would probably blow out first before the head warped. Uh, now I could be wrong, some people might have had uh, other experiences where the gasket didn't blow but the head warped. Um, but yeah. So another factor to go into it would be as I said cracked liners or porous liners because it has been sitting obviously it has been sitting for six years so I'm not putting porous liners out of the question either. Um, but I will be pulling them out and replacing them, as I said, uh, really early in the video. Anyway, um, I reckon that's it. I'll be sending this off to the machine shop next week. And uh, we'll be getting it, the, the head skimmed. And uh, if it if it's, uh, needs more than a skim, like the faces and the face of the valves and the seats of the valves cut, um i'll do that i'll do that so that i'm not having to pull the prick apart again but uh anyway i reckon this is the end of the video it's probably getting bored of me going off tangent all the time um if you like to give it, if you like the video give it a thumbs up um if you like content like this like pulling motors apart I also have another video of me pulling apart a ford 3000 motor which is also no well as a as a motor form it's a 175 cid diesel um, but if you do like videos like that please consider subscribing i'm sure i'll have more like this in the future um but yeah i reckon that's it i'll see you in the next one bye for now